coming to you today from my office in my high school band room. Behind me, memories of nearly 50 years of tradition, tradition of excellence here in the music program at our school. I started teaching 14 years ago. If you had told me 14 years ago that I would be where I am today, I probably would not have believed you. I was a classroom music teacher who occasionally used technology, mostly to check my email or to sometimes type something up. But here I am today, on the cusp of completing my master's degree and involved with technology in education more than I ever have been before. Today, I want to share a little bit with you about where I've been, where I am now, and where I see myself in the future. I'm Brian Query, and this is my story. I was born in a small town just northeast of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I knew at a young age I wanted to be a teacher. Growing up in a small town, you pretty much knew everyone. As time went on, through my work in music, I eventually decided I wanted to be a music teacher. I graduated in 1998 with my Bachelor's of Science in Music Education and got married soon after graduation. I started some master's study in music education the following year, only to stop when we started to have a family. After much pondering and a lot of prayer, I decided to resume work towards a master's degree. When exploring possible programs, I was drawn to Boise State. More thought and more prayer and lots of paperwork later, my journey in the MET program at Boise State began. Today, I share with you a little about some of the courses that I took, important and memorable projects, and applying what I've learned in my own classroom. One goal of my time during graduate studies was real-world in-class application of what we studied. This was true throughout the EdTech program. Today I share with you four of the class projects that had the most profound impact on me and my classroom. The past few years I began to explore more project-based learning in the general music classes I teach rather than test-based, which was the format my predecessor followed. In EdTech 542, Technology Supported Project-Based Learning, classwork and assignments taught me how to plan a project that was not only fun, but meaningful, had purpose, and included the right sequencing, activities, and assessment. From exploring project-based learning and its definition, I've learned that a properly implemented project-based learning classroom gives students a chance to create their own learning, but with the teacher as guide to make sure appropriate goals and standards are obtained. In my General Music 6 classes, one of the units I've taught for years is the background on the musical instruments of the orchestra. The kids learn how they're built, why they work the way they do, and how the instruments connect to other areas of music. One thing that was lacking, though, was a way for the kids to apply what they learned to a real-world experience. Several years ago, I had them draw what they would envision for a new instrument, but through my work in EdTech 542, I was able to expand upon that idea and developed a meaningful class project called The Musical Inventions of HMS. In this project, students reflect upon facts they've learned about the families and come up with an idea for an original musical instrument of their own to fit into one of the instrument families. Students provided not only a summary of their instrument, but a drawing or a working model, a video or audio recording as if in a museum type setting, and a promotional pitch for why someone would buy it. All of these artifacts were then posted by the students to a wiki page. I used what I learned in EdTech 542 to make sure that this project had the characteristics of a worthwhile project, something more than just busy work. Activities, steps, expectations, and grading are provided and displayed on a provided rubric, which is delivered in paper form and electronic form. The project provides varied activities that show definite purpose, keep students' interest, and connect to the overall objectives for the project. Expectations and objectives are clearly stated and understandable. A variety of assessments are in place to show students how meeting the objectives will be accomplished. I expected to learn about how to tie technology into projects in the classroom in EdTech 542, but I've really have learned much more than that. I've learned that project-based learning is much more than one activity. It's a whole set of expectations, questions, activities, products, and assessments leading to the final activity. I've applied this unit several times since taking the course, and it's inspired me to develop a bunch of additional units in other grade levels. Project-based learning is much more than just doing projects. It truly helps students grow, connect, achieve, apply, and understand in leading their own learning. Since 2008, I've taught a unit on audio recording in my middle school general music and multimedia classes. One of the core components of the unit is using Audacity recording software. 
Since most students have not used it or the USB microphones we use in class before coming to my class, I usually need to take time to provide step-by-step -step instruction in setup and use of the software and what students need to do to produce an audio recording. Even though detailed instructions are provided, many students often forget steps or have problems during setup. One problem I always run into is that once the introduction is done, the students move at different levels and require different levels of assistance. Two courses throughout my studies help me revise this unit and to be one that is not only more meaningful but better meets the needs of my learners. In EdTech 533, YouTube for Educators, the class afforded me the opportunity to explore a tool I feel I can have a significant impact on education using something I know quite a bit about, that's video. YouTube houses millions of videos on just about every subject and topic. Through my work in the class, I learned many things about YouTube I didn't know. I also had never used Cam Studio or had done anything with screen capture. I'd never used closed captioning or had done interlaced videos on YouTube. I'd often thought about using YouTube to show examples or probably post student work, but I never thought of it as the teaching tool I learned it can be. Through my work in EdTech 533, I had the opportunity to create several instructional videos, including a series of video tutorials using Audacity. I still do the live introduction, but then students can use these tutorials as a guide to discover the additional features. Students can also refer to these videos when needing additional assistance. The interlacing feature, which I learned in EdTech 533, has enabled me to link the videos together. We all start with the introduction video and then students can select which level to move to based on their experience and comfort. The use of the screen capture software allows me to show students step by step what they need to complete, and the accompanying narration goes along with the video, meeting the needs of both visual and oral learners. During EdTech 506, Graphic Design for Learning, I learned a great deal about visuals and their application in learning. I've always considered myself to be gifted with visual items, but I never took into consideration things that can have an impact on the learner and their understanding of the visual and its purpose. These characteristics include alignment, contrast, and proximity. When putting together a visual, it's not just about how fancy it looks, but how the learner will perceive it, decipher it, and make use of its content and purpose. So for my EdTech 506 final, I weaved the visuals I created throughout the semester into an instructional unit on Audacity. As evidence on the website I created for the project, I've used the instructional videos from the YouTube class as a key component. And then the visuals from EdTech 506 serve as key learning tools, the quality of the visuals certainly increasing through what I've learned in the course. This unit used to require a lot more work in setting up and a lot more work as the unit went on in regards to evaluating and grading. But with proper planning and setup, key activities and assessments, and the meaningful visuals that have been created, the unit has become something fun for both my students and I, and it's one I certainly look forward to each semester. Ten years ago, none of my students had iPods, cell phones, tablets, or any other types of portable technology like that. Today, almost every kid has a cell phone, and many have tablets, which has prompted our school district to develop a bring-your-own technology plan, allowing students to use these devices in class settings where a teacher permits it. This new policy was the perfect opportunity for me to introduce a mobile app I developed as part of EdTech 597, Mobile App Design. I've had a smartphone since they were first released years ago, but designing mobile apps was something really new to me, but something I really looked forward to learning about. Each day I see more and more students owning and using devices, and I really seek to harness their desire to use them. I originally had thought about learning how to design apps for the Apple iPhone platform, but when I saw the Android App Inventor program was used during this course, I instantly wanted to sign on. I learned a great deal during the class and really used the weekly assignments to help me figure out how to appropriately design for the Android platform. My final project was an app aimed at my middle school band students, which I called Mr. Q's Music Q&A. Often there's not enough time in the rehearsal setting to work on music theory, listening skills, and notation. During full group rehearsals, I began doing some listening and notation skills, but it was necessary for me to provide some enrichment to students. The brief time I see them for instrumental lessons do not provide adequate time to do both practice and assessment on this enrichment material, which is where the mobile app comes in. The purpose of this app was to help track student understanding of topics covered, topics including notation, listening, and music theory. Students can complete it at their own time, and results from the quiz get texted directly to me so I can track their progress. This not only makes the learning fun, but keeps students accountable of their progress. This has also allowed me to provide additional enrichment activities, as the students can now complete the assessment outside of lesson or ensemble time. In a time when the district provides 
instructional music time less and less. This app allows me to cover additional materials during lesson time and encourage students to complete their assessment in a new and fun way. Several years ago, our school district began developing an e-academy as part of a goal to develop online courses offered by our district. The assistant superintendent at the time asked me to develop the first online arts-based course for this e-academy, and from that, my multimedia arts class was born. I've always had a passion for video, and work in the multimedia arts class has helped me develop ways to use tools for both teaching and learning. When I saw one of the course options in my graduate program was multimedia, I was very excited because this class fit the bill as exactly what I thought I could teach in my own multimedia arts class. As teachers, even though we have finished our formal schooling, we truly never stop learning. So I began a step-by-step -step look at the multimedia arts curriculum, activities, and assessments. The first thing I did was look at everything through a looking glass and ask this question. How does using the particular tool or completing a particular activity benefit the students? Four projects we did in the multimedia class have had a direct impact on my multimedia arts class. First, I began using screencasting software to create demos and tutorials of many of the programs and sites we use. This has proved to be a benefit mostly for the fact that it provides a uniform way of providing instruction on a concept, but it also makes instruction available if a student is absent or needs review or remediation. I've also begun putting my notes as speaker notes. On occasion, I'll record my narration to add along. This is another way for students to review content or get the actual class presentation if they're absent. The podcast activity helped me in revising the digital recording unit that I do. I no longer just have them create a recording and apply some effects, but we develop a clear plan and purpose for the recording, and students now understand that making their recording isn't just an activity, but something that will provide a further benefit for someone else. Lastly, the digital story activity helped give new meaning to the Star Spangled Banner in a unit on patriotic music. Providing visuals, narration, and music to go along with the presentation makes students feel a part of the story. The ultimate goal of my multimedia arts class is to teach students how they can use multimedia as a learning tool, and the strategies and tools I learned about during EdTech 533 have helped me to provide a stronger, more meaningful experience for my students. So, where have I been? I've been in a small town, I've been in the big city, I've taught just about every grade level and every subject related to music. I've learned that I'll never stop learning, no matter how much I think I know. There's always something more I can learn to better myself. Change is inevitable and often necessary. I've been through a lot, and I must say, I've been very blessed. Where am I now? I teach grades 1 through 12 in music education. I run a part-time multimedia business. I lead worship through my church, and I'm a freelance composer. In other words, I'm a busy guy, but I'm a busy man who each and every day sees the value of using technology in everything that I do. In the classroom, technology has become the centerpiece of my instruction, a powerful teaching tool, a beneficial and necessary learning tool. I'm proud of my accomplishments and my students for what they do each and every day. I'm blessed. Where am I hoping to go? Well, I look forward to graduating with my degree in May of 2012. I look forward to taking what I've learned and applying it in my classroom, being a model for my colleagues, and an inspiration for others. While my original plan was to look for a position like an instructional technology specialist, I realized with budget cutbacks in education in Pennsylvania, such open positions are now few and far between. So I plan to explore what other options I have available. One thing is for sure. Whatever my future holds, I'm excited for what God has in store for me, for where I've been, where I am, and where I hope to be. I'm excited. I'm grateful for all of my experiences, and I truly have been blessed. Thank you for spending this time with me and for taking a journey back with me as I've taken a look back at my EdTech program here at Boise State.